There were only fusion summoning monsters. Now, I, anyone who's played the first generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! or even just seen the first season of the anime will have some sort of idea about how fusion summoning works. Basically, you play polymerization from your hand, and you'll take a monster from your field, or your hand, and then send it to the graveyard, and then, and then you get a free monster. It's a fusion. It's got a purple border, and you don't have to draw into it. Uh, so, obviously the monster you're trying to fusion summon has the list of whatever monsters are on there, two blue eyes, who cares. And usually, the monster you're getting is better than the materials. <laughs> I remember back in the day, it was honestly not too bad of a trade-off. Uh, considering most of the games you were playing came down to either play a monster or two and combo a couple spell and traps. When you could play a high-level monster with high attack essentially without tributing for it, you would. You, just, you, you would. I mean, oftentimes fusion monsters were actually pretty terrible. <laughs> uh, and you were better off just sticking with high attack main deck monsters. Uh, but there were still some fusion monsters worth summoning. Why? Well, if you were to play all three cards, well, polymerization, and then the two, the two materials from your hand... Excuse me. Regardless of whether you were going first or second, if they fissure it, no, well, congrats, it's gone. And you, yeah, I get that that could happen to literally any monster under any given situation, but the difference between getting your Celtic Guardian fissured versus your Flame Swordsman fissured is, well, the Celtic Guardian timeline, you have at least another five other cards in your hand to do something with, where in the Flame Swordsman timeline, he only has three. <laughs> Ritual monsters were a thing too, by the way. Yeah, they'd have to be drawn into as a ritual, so stacked into the main deck, and require not only a proper tribute, but you need a spell card as a catalyst. Now, in the case of fusion summoning, you have to gather three cards from your main deck to summon one from your fusion deck. And in the case of ritual summoning, you have to gather three cards from your main deck to summon one of those three cards. So, further on down the road, Kami decided to add, add in new types of monster to add into the fusion deck. Except now, it was being called the Extra Deck. Here I have Iron Chain Dragon. So, as you can see, it sports a white border. Synchro Monsters also took a page out of the Fusion book, except it did away with needing to draw polymerization. Instead of needing a spell catalyst, ca catalyst you only needed a tuner monster. And, or well, one or more non-tuner monsters. Generally speaking, most of them were pretty basic. Like, this one just says a ta tuner and a non-tuner. So, the way it works, you take two, three plus three equals six, they're on the board, now they're gonna have a fucking, there you go. It's pretty cool. And they actually had really good effects right out of the gate. A Stardust Dragon alone was just fucking awesome. So anyways. Uh, what is a tuner, even? Well, here's one of the original... Uh, I would say Generation 1 monsters, Marauding Captain, as you see Warrior in effect. Okay, there you go, he's not a tuner. Clock Resonator, Fiend, Tuner. Well, there you go, done. So, no longer did you need two oddly specific monsters in your deck if you wanted to run a cooler, bigger extra deck monster. I mean, hell, I remember wanting to run the Flame Swordsman up until I realized I had to also run Masaki and Flame Manipulator. Like, uh, those cards are just terrible. Even for back then, there was just no reason you'd want to run them for the off chance of actually pulling out the Flame Swordsman. It, it's, it wasn't worth it. Well, anyway. So now, yeah, you had to run tuners if you wanted to Synchro Summon, and yeah, the tuners at first were just okay. But by now, there's a whole lot more generic ones, and the Synchro Monsters you can summon from the get-go were pretty badass. Fast forward to the next generation, where we're introduced to Xyz Monsters. Where fucking... You got two Celtic Guardians? Man, look how pretty... Bam! Stack them on top of each other, and you get a black guy. Oh, shit. So, going away from the Synchro Summon, needing basically to do quick maths to determine what you can and can't summon from your extra deck, Konami went in the literal opposite direction. Obviously, the polarizing border change from a white border to a black border. The stars are on the left, meaning it is no longer a level, but a rank. So, yeah. 
Better get out your two level two tuners and your two level non two tuners so you can make a two level four synchro monsters and stack them on top of each other for a utopia. No one did that, don't worry. That was way too fucking extra. We basically just didn't use synchros for a while. Um, and then, you know, there was a nice balance. And, you know, eventually it got to a point where a, you could have between fusions, synchros, and exist. It's just, oh, it was an equilibrium of all the cool shit you could do. And then the Pendulum Nation attacked. Pendulums. Where did you get off to? Half monster, half spell. What the fuck? What is that? Why is that? Well, I mean, they look pretty cool. Eyes, uh, Pendulum Dragon. He's a four on, on, on either side. Doesn't matter. Four and eight. Four and eight. They're pendulums, they're in the, I mean, they're down here. They're in the pendulum zone and they're spell cards, but any other time they're monsters. They require tributes like monsters. Like here's one, I want to summon a five. Well, you got a tribute and normal summon. Or, I mean, also, if you really want, you can like, here's a four and here's an eight. Uh, that's a five, that's between four and eight. That's a seven, that's between four and eight. You can't stop cheating. That's a three. Well, you're like minus seven and seven and combo off. Now, that's pretty cool. So you're telling me I could summon five or more dragons in one fell swoop. Oh, fucking God. Now, okay, you have to draw into it like any other monster card. And like I said, you normal special summon it. So normals require tributes if it's five or higher, blah, blah, blah. However... When you can swing in with five dragons in one fell swoop. By the way, where do these go when they die? They're fucking, they're not normal monsters in that sense. They don't go to the graveyard. They go to your extra deck, but put their face up. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I know why, because there's a fucking four and there's an eight and I special summon it. Pendulum monsters. Well, I guess normal monsters too. You know, if you had a scale of one and eight, you could... Summon a Celtic Guardian. You can summon five dragons in one fell swoop. And then immediately go off into even more combo plays off of them. It's it's absurd. It's crazy. It blows my goddamn mind how far this game has come since it came out. And I love pendulums. I love the blue eyes white dragon, obviously. I mean, dragons are a thing. They're amazing. So now we're here. Now we're in the link format. Except when the links started, they they kind of sucked. Oh shit. I have no idea where I cut off. So <laughs> Hooray. Yeah. Admittedly, when they were first introduced, you only had one of each link rating monster. A link one, and a link two, and a link three. I, I don't, I don't, I can't even find him. That's how fucking terrible he is. So, anyways, uh, I really wrote that bad because it's gonna. Oh, well, here we go. Link spider has got a down arrow. It's got an okay summon. Any normal monster. There's a normal monster. I mean, if you want to get technical, that's a monster too. So, whatever. Honey, but you need two cyber monsters. Okay, great. So the first thing that opens up more than one fucking space, and it needs something oddly specific. Fuck you. And the one's like, what, Deco Talker needs any three effect monsters? Okay, that's cool. They could all be the same ones. I mean, hell, the newest one is basically the same thing. Well, they do, you know, I will be different arrows. But I mean... It's, it's, it's most definite... You're not going to fucking get them swinging out of the gate with their best shit, and I get that. I understand that. It worked out for the first, because honestly, all I ever had to do was just build my deck around it, because as it turned out, you can only summon one extra deck monster at a time, or if there was a link opening, then there you go, you could use that too. It's like, alright, cool, I got you. But you couldn't pendulum summon five dragons in one fell swoop anymore. And, well, basically I got around that with that and that 
and until I was able to get enough generic Link monsters, to now we've got things like Lanvarinkus and the Traffic Ghost. I mean, honestly, the, the battle between these two is a video all on its own. But anyways, you know, we've come a full year, and we've got so many great archetype links. Uh, the Noble Knights got one, and their generic to summon is all shit. Frogs basically are one. I guess it's technically any water monster, but you pair it with frogs and it just works out. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I mean, and there's still so much you can do, even with an odd eyes deck. You know, fusion, pop them off, get them back. Now I have a new way to pendulum summon, and then turn them into something else. I mean, hell. I've sat there and I've pulled out a the, the Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon just to get Helm onto the thing and then stack him on top again. It was like, man, there's so many ways to get so many cards out onto the field. And it's just, I don't know. It's almost negligible, this. And so now we're here today where people say links are broken, links are stupid, they're ruining the game, blah, 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 blah. You know, because one of their main criticisms is an extra link. And I legitimately don't think people understand how very little this ever actually happens. It just doesn't. It's doable. It's possible. And there are outs. There is n nothing in Yu-Gi-Oh that's unbeatable. You, you, you personally by yourself might not have an out to it. Sure, but nothing is unbeatable in this game, and even with this setup, they can't be destroyed by battle. Oh, excuse me, they can't be destroyed by battle, they can't be destroyed by card effect, they can't be... No, wait, that's the other guy. Whoops, they can't be targeted. Mr. Goblin. Oh, well, I should have had him handy from the beginning. I run two of them, so it can't be hard, too hard to find. But if you have them, and they're co cool they can't be targeted, but... You know, really, you'd want him out, because the next turn that rolls around, I mean, I guess, you do like that. But that's really not that same. That's really not the same, because you can't extra link. But at least then, they can't be targeted. I don't know. And you'd be drawing a card. Of course, if that was here, uh, his effect states for each of them in the link, you draw one card instead of one card. That sounds weird, but one times four instead of just one card. See what I mean? It's great. So, you know, you can sit here and build stupid ass boards like a whatever, him, a Trigate Wizard, this guy, uh, no, I don't know, fucking Honeybot. And then so he's sitting here, you're able to pop a card on your opponent's side of the field, banish it, and once per turn, just because he's culling to all three sides and just because you fucking said so, you can negate something. People hate Trigate Wizard, they hate Extra Links, they hate Links. Some people love them. I love them. I, I'm a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh whore. What am I talking about? You know, they're great. I like them. There's an out to them. And honestly, I think people just like to forget that a long time ago, before there were Links, and before there was Pendulums, before there were Synchros, there was dumb, broken bullshit... And there were actual literal locks to have no out to. Yu-Gi-Oh! is not broken. It did not... Of course it's not the same fucking game. There's an out to everything. Whether or not you own it or have it in your hand at the time, of fucking course not. Okay, sure. But there's an out to everything. There is no such thing as an unbreakable board. There is no such thing as a fucking thing you can't come back from unless you're just, one, not good enough, or two, you don't have the cards in your hand. Okay, great. Chaos Emperor Dragon, Yada Garasu. Of course I don't own, but whatever. You were literally drawing no cards, and you had no choice but to die. There's outs to everything now. It's actually a lot more balanced than people think, and... It's never going to be the same game as the fucking... This used to be the best card in the game. There is no best card in the game now. Because there's a lot more 
diversity. There's more cards to choose from, more decks you can build. Who fucking cares what won nationals or world championships? Yes, there's the meta. Yes, there's the competitive. But you can still just build a fucking deck, play, and have fun. Jesus fucking... I'm... I got... Uh, I'm hungry. I'm out of here. Fucking... I'm done. Just follow me on Twitter for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, bye.